Well, it's time to finally cover Samurai Warriors 3, a Nintendo Wii exclusive that was infamous back in the day, mostly because the Nintendo Wii sucked, but also because of how clunky, sluggish, slow, piss-poor performance and pixelated everything was and still is. Samurai Warriors 3 has been played by many, but for the few that have, all say the same thing. It's not good, and should have been on PlayStation 3 instead. PlayStation, after all, is the home of Warriors games. It's where it all started back on the PS1. Sorry I dragged you into this. No matter. We will simply break in again. So anyways, might as well try and get through this, cause after only completing three character story modes, I didn't want to play anymore. The game sucks. And there's many factors as to why, which I'll break down inside the review. So let's get this video over with, and talk about why Samurai Warriors 3 wasn't worth my time, and it's not yours. Still no matters though. Every game usually introduces a few new characters. Samurai Warriors 3 does just that. Only a few, and most of them suck. From what little time I've spent around them, I could care less for every one of them outside of Hanbai and Kai. The other newcomers are, we have Sunjian at home, generic samurai guy, generic gen alpha strategist, some random anime European knight looking douche, Kanbai, and generic anime protagonist with a scythe. You would not understand. The combat remains mostly unchanged from the first two games, except it's more clunky, sluggish, and boring. Even the fast-moving characters like Hanzo move so slow and attack like a Resident Evil 1 knife. Thank you. It was but a momentary weakness, and you have given me renewed strength. Forward! The only time it's fun is when you use your Musuo attack. I shall accept your challenge. My path is clear. My death is immaterial. All that matters is my lord's safety. Outside that, the horse sucks, but at least we can call it finally a small quality of life feature that makes a difference. And there's no bow this time, so that's good. Too bad they couldn't use those resources to make the horse less tankish and slow though. Bullshit! The game is literally Samurai Warriors 2, but worse in every way imaginable. I get the Wii was a piece of shit, but come on, even with a normal controller plugged in, you can't make it play any better? What a stupid design decision. I have nothing else to say. Let's just move on and get this review over with. Fire. Cavalry are useless against my rifles. Take them down. Story mode has not changed since the last game. For the very few who get a story that is, it's just about 5 stages of the usual stuff, not much in the way of new or improved. You still go through every iconic battle with Nobunaga and his forces to the incident at Hanaji. I am merely here to support you still have most of Tokugawa's stages being run away because he sucks and it's a miracle he ever got any power at all and became the one to end all the conflict in the first place. Forward! Incredible! Shadows are without form and thus without weakness. Talk of the happiness of your people. But you rob happiness of everyone else. You destroy hope. You bring it to I do not expect you to understand. The 
only thing that's been improved is all the cutscenes. For the most part, at least, they're really good. In fact, Omega Force should just give up on making games and go make anime in a 3D style instead. <laughs> I do hate how so many characters have no story mode, especially those who did have one in previous games like Kakuni, Romaru, Katara, No, Toshie, and more. They also removed dream stages and stages in this entry. Another thing I'm not a fan of is just how much more restrictive this game is in comparison to other titles. Dynasty Warriors 5 started this trend where everything is much more objective based. This means you cannot do things how you want. Even though the battlefield is open-ended, your gameplay is not. You're in rare form today. The enemy overcame our flood attack with their strength of will. A man's will is not a fragile thing. The brute force cannot break it. Lord Kanetsuru, I promise you, my will shall never break. So get used to seeing non-stop pop-ups and having to run all over the place in a predetermined route to do what the game wants and not what you want. See the enemy commander? Nope, not allowed. Get a smack across the face by the developer like a black mom whooping her child for bad mouthing her. Excuse me, why? The game is just too restrictive on what you can do at all times. Even if you think a different way to approach an objective makes more sense, you cannot do so. You must follow what Omega Force decided or get a game over. So yeah, get ready for tons and tons of timed objectives where you must cross the entire map and avoid fighting in favor of getting to a certain spot in said time limit. It's... It, it's awful. They did keep free mode, but I could care less. Glad it's here, but... The only use it has is to play any of the characters that have no mus no story mode and also play as any character you want that's unlocked and play any battle that you want, but you can't choose which side you want to fight for, unlike in Dynasty Warriors 4. This is very restrictive and just deters me from playing it, I mean, yay, whatever, moving on. <laughs> This ought to be enough to grab their attention. There they are! A new mode exclusive to this entry, and thank god because it sucks, is Murasama Castle. You can play as anyone you want that you've unlocked and fight hordes of demons in more fantasy-like environments. It's a nice change of pace till you realize just how spongy the enemies are, not to mention all the bullshit like poisonous water, explosive mines you can't really squeeze by. Some enemies can only be hurt with a strong attack, so get used to spamming a single move over and 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 over again. Incredible! How many of you guys are there? There's annoying balls of lightning that spam attack you and are just near impossible to avoid. No 
shit. This mode gets old fast when you realize it's just non-stop run to the end of the stages kind of level, especially with a timer. Honestly, just gave up after having to escort useless peasants who die too quickly as the enemies spam their attacks non-stop. Officer Edit is here in the base game, a thing that occurs in SW4 as well. Here we can create a basic character using some basic presets. The only real depth is controlling our colors using a full RGB system. So go ahead and make a pink ninja or cayenne samurai. I just decided to make myself Charlie Muda and some female characters. By default there's only three weapon choices, the generic sword, spear, and naginata. To get more, we have to unlock the weapons within the dojo. It's okay and more in depth than Dynasty Warriors 4 and 5's character creator. A step in the right direction, ain't gonna lie. Thankfully, Samurai Warriors 4 would greatly improve upon this concept, but here it's just fine. Except you won't be fighting alongside your characters and are only used in select modes, such as Free Mode, Murasama Castle, and finally, Historical Mode. So let's talk about that one. Historical mode is all about playing through each unique battle as your own edit characters. That's it and it's nothing special. I honestly could have cared less for it. You just fight for others and earn a bit of a name for yourself, experience visual novel lazy storytelling with just text and no audio. Why couldn't they get voices for these moments? It's boring. When you only have text. What is this, the Commodore 64, we can't have voice acting during cutscenes in the style of visual novels? Lame. Let's just move on to the dojo and be done with this game. Turn it up! Turn it up! You can unlock bonuses within the dojo, so long as you have the rice needed and met various other requirements such as completing a character story mode or reaching level 50 with them. These bonuses are new characters, weapons for edit officers, maxing out stats, and unlocking customization options for unique officers. You can unlock new characters with rice you get from completing battles and a large bonus for completing a character story. This is a stupid way to give players a sense of illusion progress. Meanwhile, in older games, you just completed a certain character story mode to unlock a new one. Plus, a lot of the characters in here don't have a story mode, hence why they don't cost 100 rice, but instead only 80. Also, they didn't include Kojiro. I'm gonna have to deduct points for that one. Yeah. I'm the best there is and the best I'll ever be. Yeah. You certainly are strong. <laughs> You're no victim, no poor innocent. You're not someone I'm compelled to cut down for their own good. I've never met anyone like you. You're the only one who is capable of matching me. The only one worth cutting down. Come on then, let's go. The vault features all unlocked characters info and cutscenes. So if you wanted to see certain scenes again, you can. This is only real, really good for those who want to make videos like what I'm doing. A couple of trivia facts while we're here in the other section of this review. Samurai Warriors 3 was the last game in the series to feature an English dub. Also, this is the first game in the series to lack facial expressions. Something you'd see in Samurai Warriors 4 as well with Masuo tags. I must say, that was the most impressive victory. Your lips moving. 
The music is great and was used in this review for a reason. I mean, I usually try to use the game's soundtrack for every review, but sadly not every game has one out there to download like on KH Insider. Let alone, due to copyright problems, I have to avoid certain soundtracks and certain songs within them as well. It's YouTube after all, folks. If it wasn't for the normal controller option, I wouldn't have played this game in the first place. The Nintendo Wii is a garbage console with one of the worst controllers ever made. Most of which are made by Nintendo. The king of fuckups. <laughs> the English dub is a mixed bag. Much like Dynasty Warriors 4 Empires, Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires and its expansions, Dynasty Warriors 6 and its expansions, and of course Dynasty Warriors 8 and its expansions and also Dynasty Warriors 9. So, how about we give that old man the shock of his life? Five fools together can overcome anything! However, there are a few highlights in the dub. It's clear they got some anime dub actors to play several roles. In fact, I'd recognize the narrator from Dynasty Warriors 7 as the narrator. But also, holy crap, Listen to Yukimura. You know who that is? Your pride as a warrior remains intact. There is no need for you to die. Please! Take care of yourself, Ina. But most of the voices feel like last minute castings rather than fitting choices, such as Mitsuhide, who's just a joke. He was best in the first game. <laughs> no, I cannot. If I die now, your deaths would have no meaning. Lord Nobunaga, Ranmaru, I finally understand what it means to believe. They did keep Ramaru's female voice actor from the second game. Not sure how I feel about that. I mean, he's a feminine male, but not an actual chick. He's still got a dick. <laughs> At the end of the day, Samurai Warriors 3 is a mediocre game. It is worth Plane? Not really. It's literally just the same old same old with not much in the way of new or improved. You played any of the PlayStation 2 games, then you've played Samurai Warriors 3. It's still a pixelated, jaggy, blurry mess given Nintendo Wii is just a PlayStation 2 with motion based gimmick controls, where you just mimic that you're jerking off with the Wii remote and bowl a perfect game in Wii Sports Bowling. <laughs> How can you laugh at a time like this? So yeah, it's not a great game, or a good one at that. It's a mediocre title that should be left forgotten in two time. The clunky sluggish combat and movement, those lackluster amounts of enemies on screen making it pointless to use your Masuo, a plague on Samurai Warriors since day one till about the fifth game, where there was enough soldiers on screen for it to not feel wasteful, Plus the fact that most of the maps are just ripped from the PlayStation 1 and 2 games and barely anything new. Then there's the mediocre new cast of characters which almost all but suck. No man can have everything he wants. It's still better than Samurai Warriors 4 2 was, but that's about it. So cross off another Warriors game off the list. We only have two more Samurai Warriors games to cover before we're done. Those being Samurai Warriors 4 Empires and Samurai Warriors 4 DX. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later.
Take care of yourself, Ina. The land was united under the banner of the Tokugawa. The age of war was at an end.